Hey, Greg, uh, just wanted to, to talk about just th this game. It seems like you guys maybe would be frustrated by not winning, maybe excited that you uh, didn't lose and uh, maybe happy with the draw. Is that is that fair? Yeah, in some ways, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's fair to hit, hit each of those emotions. Like, again, I felt like, you know, the first half, this is the first time we played against uh, back five over the course of this preseason and season. And in the first half, I felt us trying to work through how to penetrate and how to create chances was a little bit, uh, a little murky. Having said that, we get a penalty, another missed penalty uh, or saved penalty, which is um, maybe points that have added up now and twice. Uh, and then I, I felt like, <clears throat> again, um, we get to halftime at zeros and... Uh, then we concede one pretty early, obviously, in the second half, with which, I mean, Joseph makes an incredible effort to def to work back to win the ball initially and then maybe fatigue brain a little bit. He cuts to the inside and tries to eliminate the player on the dribble, and uh, I haven't seen it back yet to see if it's soft or not, but um, nevertheless, we put ourselves in the situation, and now we're, we're chasing it a little bit. <clears throat> um, Tried to stick with our shape for a little bit longer uh, because I felt like we were starting to grow into some of the opportunities. And then we concede off of a non-clearance that we kind of chest down for them and they finish. So another what I would call a mistake. Um, after that, we made some adjustments into, uh, into something that I felt really helped us inside of playing against the, uh, playing against the back five with that is three strong center backs and deep. We put a second guy up in there and I felt like we started to create and penetrate and create better actions to get better looks at goal. Um, but we had some looks. Joseph hits one off the, the post. We have uh, obviously two goals. Dan has a, a pretty good look there at the end. Uh, some moments start to shape up a little bit. But I uh, <clears throat> frustrated because I felt like, again, the goals we gave up were a little bit unnecessary. Um, we were working through how to penetrate and really create chances. We missed another penalty. Frustrating. Um, but I appreciate and and I was really pleased with just the fight back being 2-0 on the road in Nashville and to keep, keep pushing and creating opportunities and getting one back and then getting the second back. Uh, it is is just a great mentality for the for the group, but well, I think there was opportunity for us to you know to take three today if we execute and, and we defend properly. If we execute over the day, we, there's something more for us I think on the occasion. But good mentality to fight back. Does this keep the momentum going for you guys? Does, was it important to not lose this game? Yeah, I think it's always important. Again, it's early in the season and we really haven't had to to grind back in a game yet. So this was the first one where this particular group was faced with an uphill challenge and uh, and managed to, to execute a, and get themselves back in it. Um, so yeah, I think all of these experiences early in the season are important to keep momentum, but also to build character and to build some things inside of, uh, you know, a little bit of a new group, not completely new, but um, and then, like I said, we learned a little bit from the experience playing against a, a different setup where a team had kind of five in the back and we had to, to figure out how to, to break that down. So we also learned from a tactical perspective a little bit over the course of this game as well. All things that we can use as we continue to build forward. Go ahead, Alex. Thanks, Greg. Trump. Yeah. Alex? Hey, Greg. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, Dan Govlich now with three goals in three games to start the season. Um, I guess in general, maybe in this game as well. I mean, what have you seen from him so far? Um, and do you think that there's still a potential for him to take maybe even another step? We saw a couple of chances he had, and especially the penalty kick earlier today. Definitely. I, I, I definitely think there's more steps in this for Dayan. Uh, I mean, he's gotten himself into some good spots to finish the goals he's finished. The guys have found him in really good spots. Uh, <clears throat> but I, I think there's still a couple of occasions where he isn't quite prepared when other opportunities are showing up. His feet aren't sorted, or he he just being a little bit sharper in those moments to finish. He had a he had a pretty good look from on his left foot, uh, you know, in the second half as well. That maybe on a you know as he keeps getting better and and keeps improving or keeps working, that maybe he, that becomes a better chance than it ended up being. Uh, uh, just some other moments too that. You know that again, just in some of his link up play and things that he can keep growing that he's a young player and he's but it's good when you're a striker and you're scoring every game, obviously he left the penalty on the table, which is gonna be frustrating for him and everyone else um but 
there's still more room for him to, to keep growing and keep improving and uh, and keep scoring goals. And so there's no there's no question that that uh, that needs to happen and will happen and, and for him. Yeah, I wanted to ask you too. What you thought maybe with Justin Paisel's game um, today? Definitely a lot different than the last match. Um, just your thoughts on that? Yeah, it was it was tough, especially in the first half for Joseph. Right, they played in a back five, and the the left wing back really didn't leave him too much. So it was really hard to get things going off the right side. He was, you know, the space to run behind wasn't as clear because of the back five, and because the that left wing back was kind of staying with him and, and closing that off. Um, so it was it was hard for him to get touches and get impact until we then switched the the rotation and we then brought brought him inside a little bit more, added another forward, and then brought somebody around the outside of him. And then I felt like he was really starting to find some good spots that it was hard for them to organize the marking of him. Again, things that we are learning with him and and with the group as we uh, as we keep facing sort of different ways to defend us and and, and different opportunities. Um, to create solutions but then once I think he found that spot I thought as a collective group and him started to get a lot more dangerous it was in that, that inside position that he curled the one off of the the post then he had a couple run outs you know then he was arriving and, and slipping some balls so I I felt like that opened him up a lot more when we were able to soften up the the kind of the marking of him if you will thank you Greg say Charles back thanks uh go ahead Sophie hey Greg um Sorry. A couple of questions. First one is, you talked about the men's one. I asked you about that in the last presser. Bounce back ability, so important in football. Sure. Um, maybe teams past had a bit more apathy, some of your squads. It seems like this team has this belief that they're never out of the game, even though it's just so it's such an early start of the season. Is, is that something that you're seeing as well, that belief in the players? Yeah, I, I think this group is... Uh, it's a resilient bunch, you know, they, they come and they work hard every day. And, and I think as we've, you know, we haven't thrown a lot of different things at them, but today I threw a kind of a different shape and pushed a second forward, which we haven't really done in preseason, brought somebody in. Uh, they quickly adapted inside of that shape. And then I thought, you know, also made use of it, you know, pretty, pretty well. So I think just the resiliency that continued to compete. Um, <clears throat> I think the group feels like with the guys that are out there, they can create opportunities and they can create chances. It's just, I felt like I needed to help them a little bit to get the right guys in the right spaces to, to create some, uh, create some problems for the other team defensively, just in terms of how they were going to organize the defending of us. And once we did that, I think it unlocked us a little bit and then we were, we got dangerous. Uh, but the mentality was great. Um, yeah, I think this group feels like they they have special qualities, and I feel like they can do special things. And so there's no reason why, you know, they shut it down because they are, you know, they they're young and they're hungry and they're going for it. And they got two veteran guys in the back who have been great at just dealing with stuff and uh, showing their experience and dealing with plays. So, um, you know, I think it's great. Again, it's early in the season, so we we utilize this opportunity to, to take some lessons out of it, but also maybe grow on the mentality side to just doing something a little different coming from behind today. And you don't want missed penalties to become a habit. Any any you thinking that you'll stick with Dayan, or is that something that you're kind of going to look at and maybe reassess again? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we, over the last couple of weeks, we've been having guys take penalties and, you know, Guys are taking five a week, and dayon has been five for five each of the weeks. There's other another guy or guys who've been five for five in their penalties over the course of the week. So, uh, yeah, we, we may – maybe it's next man up. We'll see. But it's uh, – I think when guys get up there, they just need to be clear. The, the issue I think that Dayon ran to, and I, I've seen it a little bit in training, is if you go down the middle, you got to put it a little higher, and you can't just – you can't – if you're going to smash it, you got to go high because the goalkeeper needs a little bit of time to get out of the way if he's going to be diving somewhere and he hit it hard but kind of kept it at that foot level. Otherwise, I think it would have been a decent penalty. But, uh, yeah, we need we need to make those. Those are opportunities to, to take goals as they did, and we, we need to finish those off. So we're going to find somebody or somebody needs to step up and be the guy who can – you know, at least hit ninety percent. Maybe not. Maybe not one hundred percent. But we got to get most of them. We're at, we're at zero percent right now. That's not a good enough. And we'll wrap up with Rob Jalen. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Greg. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, we've seen uh, Mark Delgado be uh, a really important piece for this team so far. I mean, uh, every every week he's stepping up with good performances. 
We see him in the back line, in the midfield, even on the wing on occasion. Can you talk to us about the importance of what he brings to the team? Yeah, you know, obviously I've been with Mark for a long time. So when I make tactical adjustments, Mark has seen all of them. So he's very comfortable. So, you know, early in the game, we started with him a little bit higher. And as he's been doing in the last several games, uh, playing a little higher in the gap on that right side and working with Joseph and, uh, and creating him some opportunities on that. But <clears throat> as we switched the switched our shape, I dropped him down into more of a second pivot uh, to be able to cover to cover Mickey because I wanted Mickey to get a little higher so I could breed Joseph inside. And so Mark just quickly shifts into, you know, the next responsibility. For me, he's like, he's the great balancer on our team because he, he just does whatever we need to do. And, and he recognizes it in the run of play that there needs to be a certain player in a certain spot and he'll go fill that spot. Even if for that moment, it's not necessarily his job, he will do it because he knows the team needs it done during that period. Um, and then <clears throat> I always say this about Mark, like his, the speed at which he transitions from attacking to defending and defending to attacking is second to none. He just, you know, the, he never reacts any other way than just to get back to work and try to deal with situations. So when, you know, when you're chasing leads and games get a little bit opened up, you, you like to put him in positions where he can react and transition and try to re-recover balls or help you to, to keep games in, in the attacking half of the field, things like that. So um, again, I, we utilize him in, in different ways, but I, he always pretty seamlessly just falls into whatever the role and the task is, and, and, he, and he gets it done. So I, you know, I think he's been off to a great start this season. He's gotten a couple assists, and today he just did a lot of, a lot of work on both sides of the ball for the team. Thanks for your time, Greg. Thanks.